All right, so let's have some fun talking about some Rust reverse engineering. So right here, I have pulled up Patrick Wardle's 2024 malware report, which goes over like, he's been doing this for a while now. It goes over all of the malware from the previous year. And it's a pretty in-depth blog post. I think these are great, especially if you're getting started or you just wanna look at a collection of a bunch of malware to look at. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna start with this Rustor one because he brought up something interesting that I didn't realize prior. I've looked at this in the past, but there's a specific behavior that was interesting that wasn't in any of the reports, it looks like. And that is the use of the log command uh, looking for the restart initiated or shutdown initiated events. I think that's interesting. And because this is a Rust sample, it allows us to talk about Rust, which can be a little difficult to reverse engineer. So grab this file and opened it up in Binja and we're at the start function here. So one thing really quickly, is if you look at the function names, they're all stripped here, which makes it a little bit difficult to figure out what's going on, but we're gonna use what we saw in that article to help us target a specific function and understand how Swift resolves these strings and these string blobs and that should help with understanding how to reverse engineer Rust a little bit better. So we're gonna look for this log stream command. So something that's always super useful is just to look at strings and look for something you're looking for. In this case, log stream, and I see this here. If I double click this, we go back just to remember where we were. We see that at address 441, it looks like this blob may contain that string. So let's go there, one, so it's around here. And we can see log stream right here. So something that can be difficult to reason about when you're looking at Rust is the fact that strings are not null terminated. So you'll see just blobs of strings together like this. And usually you'll see like references to this blob and then indexing between within this blob for the actual strings the good thing is is that uh we need to know the size of the string so we can use that to determine like what string is being passed into what function so we're going to kind of do that here we're going to see all references to this location and we're going to look at all the cross references there right and we see this function here that has many. So maybe that would be interesting for us to look at. And just to see exactly what these functions are grabbing, right? So this function, for example, we see this is most likely a size. This is an index within this string blob. Let's take a look at what that resolves to. So we can use bv.read here and we can just get this address. zero x here and then we need to see what the index was so zero x b3 zero x b3 and a size of three all right so that helps us see that this is the log that we were looking for so now now that we know that this function is calling this and it's using this log string then we can go to this function and see how that works and see if this is the function that's in charge of building out this command. So let's go here, we're gonna click here. I tagged this earlier, just to help me in case I forget it. And I added a comment. So just something normal that you do as you reverse engineering, because I lose track of stuff all the time. Okay, so we have this that we're gonna focus on. We saw this first one was for the log string. 
and it was moved into this function, it was passed into this function. If we just kind of take a look at cross references here, we'll see that this is actually used for potentially other commands. So if you're looking for other commands here, you can use this function to look at other strings that are passed to it and gain an understanding of what that is. Most likely this is like setting this up and then creating a address or using an address to then pass arguments to this command. And then at some point pass all this in one blob into another function to actually run it. But let's see, let's dig a little bit deeper here to understand. So this first one we know is going to be the log command. And let's look at this next one here. So the reason that this one is a little bit weird in comparison to this, if this is because this does not have a size associated to it. I don't know why that is, but let's just try to resolve that and see what it's looking at. So that's B six and I'm just going to pass it a three just to see what's there. And we see the string for str. We can assume that this is for stream, which is an argument that's passed to the log command. But why is it missing whatever the length of string is, which I think that's six. And if we go and follow this and go into this function, maybe we'll gain a better understanding of that. So let's go here. And then we see that arc one and arc two are passed to this function. And then there is a size here of six. And we can also see this if we go back and we look at the disassembly of this, which sometimes it's easier to see this. Go here and let's look at the disassembly. We'll see arg one and arg two, which are an x zero and x one are being passed to this function. And then we see the size of stream in this case is being moved into W2 and that's also being passed. So the size is there. It's just not visible when you first take a look at this function. So let's go back and we know that this is stream. So let's just make a note of that. All right, so then let's continue. We have this one, which luckily does have the size. Both of these have the size. So we can parse these out take a look. So that's going to be an index BC and this is of length 0xB. And that is predicate. That is this argument that's passed to the log command. Awesome. And then now we can do the last one here. And that is 69 0xC7. And it's still referencing this exact same string blob. And now let's solve that. And that is the remaining part of this command here. Long comment, but that's okay. All right. So now we know what this is, what this is, what this is, what this is. We can take a look closer at like uh, what this function may do. And if there's other values here. It looks like there might be another uh, string here that's passed to this function. Not sure what it's doing. It's probably just adding arguments to this command that's getting built. But we're not going to worry about that. We're going to keep going and look at the next part of this, which is this long thing here, this call. So we have this call that's taken in a function, which is itself taken in a function, which is taking another reference to this string blob and this does not have a size either. But this is similar to the function that we saw here that didn't carry a size. Not sure why that is, but we can take a look at this really quickly and see the way that this is being handled. We see that there's a reference to that same string blob and it's at index 130. So let's just take a look at what's there. We may be able to see just read like five bytes from there and see what it might be grabbing. Okay, so dash dash I and F, and that is most likely this right here. So that is gonna be a size of, it looks like that's probably six as well. So we can assume that it's gonna use the same function which itself passes in that six for that string length. 
So this is going to be info here. So let's make a note of that. So dash dash info. And now we're getting that string. This is, it looks like that is that same pointer to this address that has this command here that's also being passed in with a two. Not sure what that two is for. And then it's being passed to this function. We follow that. This calls other functions. And this can turn into a rabbit hole trying to understand exactly what these do. But it looks like that just returns. This has like a close function in here. And then this also just returns. Not sure, but this is getting passed as a function to this. And let's see what this does. Maybe this can make sense of like what exactly is going on here. So let's double click on this. This calls into this function. It's passing in this argument that was passed in. And then we come here and then let's go there. And now we can see stuff that kind of makes sense of what we would expect, which is a call here to pose expand. So this will end up launching the process or the command that was set up for this. And we can see a fork call here, which makes sense. So this, we can like rename this just to make it easier for us to understand POSIX spawn. I like sometimes keeping the address here so I know exactly what it is. So going back, we can just rename this for fun, call to POSIX. And then now this kind of makes a little bit more sense as to what's going on here. But again, Rust is a little bit strange when it comes to the strings. So you need to find references to these string blobs, get the indexes, find where the size is for the string. And then you can go all the way from looking at actual string here, following a blog post. You can find a string that's interesting to you. Come in here, put it in, follow this and then find exactly where it is that it's used. All right, so that's it for this one. Uh, some more Rust reversing fun.